Hello everybody, Scott Roberts here with Explore Scientific and this is the Open Go To Community Live, episode 22. Uh, we're here with Kent Martz and Jerry Hubble. Um, we had, I think we all had a good 4th of July. How, how was your your 4th, Jerry? We were talking, of, <laughs> we were talking about did, it. Yeah. You were saying that um, that uh, your your uh, your your governor treats you guys like children out there. So what what happened? Yeah, they uh, well, they, I live in Virginia, and uh, our governor has locked us down. We're still locked down. Uh, yeah. A lot of states have opened up, but we're locked down. So, so you uh, couldn't go out and celebrate the fourth. Well, they 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 discourage it. Let me put it that way. Okay. <laughs> But you they did just, anyways, right? Well, no, we did it in our driveway. We we had our own little fireworks show and and had a barbecue and stuff. And um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. we did. There was no fireworks. Every year we have a parade and fireworks here at the lake where I live at. It's a big to do. You know, it's a big thing every year. It's really a popular thing. And we didn't have nothing this year. And nothing. Jeez. Nothing. That's kind of frustrating. Well. I went to uh, Bentonville. Uh, you were in Bentonville, right, Kent? Yeah, I didn't go to the fireworks show. Did you go to the fireworks show? I didn't uh, actually I go, home. but you know, I was like, I was over yeah. by. Um, I was actually many blocks away, but you could see it from far. Yeah, away. it was yeah. pretty pretty nice. Bentonville pretty puts on a good show. Yeah, yeah. So we I drove. Hope, we hope everybody we out there who who uh, normally watch our show, and even if you don't normally watch our show, we hope you had a a good weekend um you know uh, of course fourth of july is a big deal out here in the united states so um uh but uh i think every country has its own uh uh form of independence day or some sort of special holiday where they let go of a lot of fireworks and uh, uh yeah so when i was, was in taiwan it was double tens day you know and the, man you know the, the chinese they know how to uh they know how to make a fireworks show. Well, I'll tell you what. It, in my neighborhood, it was, uh, I think the fireworks tent had a buy one, get 155 free or something like that because there was more fireworks than, than ever has gone off before. And yeah. they're not just little bottle rockets. There's these five-inch mortars that you could take out a main battle tank with, I think. You know, That's I mean, good. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Huge. Yeah. It was, what, it what was you crazy. You can buy here in Arkansas, I mean, Probably is not legal in any other state, I think, because the, the certainly, I mean, I'm from California, so they don't let you do anything more than like sparklers or something, you know? I know. So, you know, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, light, a lighting a, a lighter is a risky there's business a, out there. It's so easy to start a fire. But there's uh, a business opportunity. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's right. But we had a good time. So we have people joining us right now. It's great. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, Wolfgang joined us. Um, uh, we have uh, Mike Wiesner lurking again, okay, <laughs> which is great. He just sent over to me a review he did on some eyepieces, Explore Scientific eyepieces, so I appreciate that. Uh, James, the astrophotographer, hope you all had a nice weekend and kept all your fingers. <laughs> yeah. For our people, so. hold those things and light them, right? Uh, Dennis Wild just jump, just stopping in to say hi. Hello. Hey, Dennis. Dennis. How you doing? Yeah. And Mr. Thump 30, L.A. was epic. Made me proud. Okay, that's good. Gary Palmer uh, out in the U.K. Hey, guys. Hope you had a good weekend. We did. So, so anyhow, we uh, there's there's some uh, uh, topics that we that we wanted to discuss. Um, uh, we're coming back to talk just briefly about the watchdog uh, feature on, uh, on Explore Stars and uh, what, 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 uh, what's come up so far? Well, I, I, this question comes up every so often, but I decided to post a poll out there now. And uh, let, me, let me bring up my, my screen here. Let me, uh, first let me bring up the poll. Make sure I can find it here fast. Um, and I'll show the, show the results. I just posted it yesterday, but we've got a few results. Share my desktop right now. Can you see that? I can. Okay. 
did uh, I see a ship? <laughs> so basically, uh, oh, we've got 13 votes so far since okay. yesterday, which is pretty good. Okay. And it looks like uh, the vast majority of people do not want the mount to stop tracking, even when they disconnect from the Explore Stars or from the ASCOM driver, which is what the watchdog timer is for. When it's enabled, it it watches uh, the communications going back and forth, and if it if it stops, then after 20 seconds, it'll it'll stop the mount. And so it looks like 60% or thereabouts want the uh, want the dis- want it disabled. There are there are two votes right now for people that want that rely on it, which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. And then there's then there's three votes that people don't care one way or the other. So I encourage everybody to go out there on the uh, forum and vote on that uh, to get your opinion. We've gotten pretty good response from uh, these polls. The previous one I talked about, we haven't talked about for a few, uh, probably a week or two. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Hey, hey Jerry, while we're on this poll real quick. uh, Okay, let me go back to it. (laughs) Sorry. That's all right. Uh, While we're on the poll real quick, uh, up there in the description, you talk about the G11 and the Exos 2. But you don't talk about the IXOS 100. Right, right. Why not? Right. So this was, as I, I, I spoke to Scott about this before the show a little bit, The uh, there is a little bit of reasoning to this, uh, believe it or not. The first two, the first release of the, G, uh, the G11 and the XS2 PMC8 included this watchdog timer. It was a safety feature that we built in. Mm-hmm. to the system that was default and uh we figured it would and it, and it's really for people that are for visual use um uh, scott may want to speak to this but it was put in place because we didn't we, we thought it would be a good idea to stop them out if people either shut their tablet down or walk maybe walked off from the mount while they were had the tablet and it lost communications it would shut it down right and so, Scott was involved with that. Yeah, the backstory is is that I was uh, I was field testing uh, the mount, and um, uh, you know I had uh, I had walked away from from uh, you know I was going back and forth from being out in front of our office to back inside the office, and uh, and um, you know so uh, Dan Dickerson realized that if I kept disconnecting because I was dis- I was testing also to see how far away I could get um, with the uh, with the Wi-Fi at the time and he realized if I was disconnecting and I was uh, near you know going over the the top there that over the meridian uh, that I could crash the mount you know so to speak so um, now we have talked about you know what would happen if you did crash the mount and there's not going to be we, we already know there's not going to be any, ele- any electronic damage or any motor damage or any gear damage. Um, but we still felt it was uh, overall a good safety feature to have in there. So, so we left it in. Okay, so that was, uh, that was the feature. Um, and then we started to get people who wanted to be able to turn that off and have it still continue to track. Those were all right, the, the main was people, right, 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 right. People that were using Explore Stars specifically for astrophotography, they weren't using the ASCOM driver. Right, and we were developing Explore Stars for the visual astronomer. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, darn it, astrophotography has just become so popular. <laughs> so, that's right, right. <laughs> so that's and actually that's, that's a good right. thing, you know. So it's a good thing, and people want to make it as easy as they can get away with. So they figured if they were using Explore Stars. For visual use, just use that for photography. Also, don't have to add anything else, for especially for DSLR photography. If you're doing just simple DSLR wide field photography, Explore Stars does work and it works pretty well. Um, but you want to make sure it doesn't shut down in the middle of your imaging. If you were to, uh, you want to turn your tablet off to save energy. But you don't want the mount to stop tracking because you got a sequence of images on your camera taken one after the other for a couple hours. So it's nice to be able to turn your tablet off 
and have that continue to go on. And that's really who it's designed for. Um, but so I took that information and I, I developed the other version of the firmware, which is the A version of the firmware, mm -hmm. which has the uh, A next to the rev level. And so you can load that on the PMC-8 and it'll just it'll ignore the communication dropouts. It'll just continue to track. Uh, so I took that information, that, that learning experience from our customers and said, well, I'm not even going to implement the timeout on the IXS 100 because people have asked for it to be removed. And yeah. so I've not had one question. Now, I'll probably get questions now, but I have not had one question on our IXS 100 customers about why I don't have this watchdog timer to stop my mount from moving. I have not had question one about it for the IXS 100. So that's why I decided to do this poll to see who really wants this. Um, yeah. Right. And those polls are important. So participation is important by the members. Very important. Right. In, in right. a, uh, you know, in a co-developed um, uh, product uh, like this, you know, we really do need participation from the people who belong to the group. So I wanted to bring up this previous poll that I did. I want to, I want to go back and this previous one from a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. that I started, what, what, uh, what platform do you prefer to run explore stars on? Which is kind of an interesting question. We've talked to people about it before, but never really did a formal polling. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty interesting. Here's the results. Um, looks like we've gotten six, eight, seven, thirty-six, thirty-eight, thirty-eight people have answered, um, which is pretty good. And um, it looks like the majority of people, the plurality, I should say, use the iPad, Apple iPad. Which is why we got such a big um, request for it. I think that the majority, not the majority of people are using iPads, but the majority of people are actually using an Android. Actually, it's about the same, I guess, 6 and 26, 31, not quite. 30% total use an Android tablet. 45% use an iPad and about... 22% uh, use Windows platform, whether it's a tablet or a PC. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so I thought I'd get people, and if you haven't voted on this, go ahead and uh, try to uh, include it. But it's been pretty, I don't think we've had one or two votes over the last week that's been added to this poll. But this shows us how important the Apple iPad system uh, is, and also yeah. the phone. I, I have yet to add, do a poll on what phone systems people have, but I think we can probably understand from this that, that it would be the same level of people. Yeah. The other thing, I'm not in terms of market share, it's kind of interesting because, I don't know, do you think more people use Apple products than Android products, or is it the opposite? Do you think, I Scott? Think it, I think it's the opposite. It's at least split, okay? Right. Um, and it may be a lot more Android than Apple products. In the, I mean, in the world, if you're talking right, right. in the world. If you go but country by country or state by state, it's probably quite different. So. Right, but it's interesting that we have a bias in our products. The people that buy, uh, that run Explore Stars, that, and that buy the PMC-8 yeah. are Apple people. Right. You know, and as opposed to Google or Windows, you know, it's kind of interesting. Well, maybe that people that use Windows are doing more desktop type work, you know, and right. up observatories and stuff. And the guys that tend to like using a tablet, okay. Um, Choose the uh, Apple tablet. Yeah, they maybe they just like that. Maybe they feel it's more stable or whatever, you know. I mean, I have a variety of... Uh, of things I have, I have a desktop Windows. I I have a a, a Mac, okay, that I use. I have a, a MacBook, and I have an Apple tablet and an iPhone. So, right, right. Um, as far as as far as phones go, you know, I, I just I like the way that that whole ecosystem of the Apple uh, stuff works for me. You know, so 
Um, but there are things that I specifically use a Windows um, machine for, you know. Um, well, I'm the same way. I'm a Windows guy, a developer, you know, long time user for, for yeah. decades. And, uh, but for a tablet, I chose an Apple iPad to use. So that's, that's kind of that way. So we got some uh, comments here. Uh, uh, Wolfgang says, I always sit nearby my telescope and I have a beer. <laughs> Maybe a beer can holder for the tripod is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Wolfgang, I, I, the ch throwdown challenge for you. For you, I want to see you make, uh, you can make it out of duct tape. You can, you know, 3D print it. I don't care. I, I want to see the ultimate beer can holder for your tripod. So... Maybe we can challenge all of our members. For that. Yeah, we can get uh, Mike Lemus, who does a lot of 3D prints for uh, for yeah. things on the uh, IXO, on the, his Exos 2. He's made some attachments. Right. Maybe you can talk to Mike Lemus about designing a 3D uh, cup holder yeah. for the tripod. Yeah, I know. So, I know Kent wants one. You know, Kent, <clears throat> Kent loves a cold beer. So, right. So, so Wolfgang, are we talking about? Um, 12 ounce beer, 16 ounce beer, or, or a 48 ounce, what we call road pops. You know, road pops. Road pops. <laughs> yeah, road pops. That's what I grew up calling them. Yeah, that sounds like a, I don't a think it's 1980s very thing. Correct. <laughs> okay. Correct. Uh, okay. Carlos Aragon's asking a question for sponsorship of his program. Carlos, I'm the guy to get in touch with. You can reach me at s at explorescientific.com. Uh, we can discuss your ideas there. Uh, Gary Palmer, I would want the mount to track all the time at any time on any mount. Yeah. Where, Astrophotographer. Scott, where are you, Astrophotographer. Scott, where are you, see, where are you seeing uh, Gary at? Facebook. I'm not seeing him on Facebook. I do. I see okay. Gary. Don't he's, worry. He's lurking. Yeah. Uh, James, the astrophotographer on YouTube, says, I use a Samsung Galaxy tablet and a Fire HD 10 and also two Windows laptops. There you go. Uh, Carlos says, Android rocks, just saying. Windows 2. Um, Oladrake Wolfgang says, I use an, an Ecos tablet, Android, and it works well. Okay. Um, Let's see. Dave Connolly says YouTube uh, says PC over Mac, but iPad over Android. Okay. Um, Ken uh, on YouTube says Android users use Explore Stars. I'm a PC Android user. Mm -hmm. And Carlos says opposite. Android has so much more versatility, especially for us. Neat for us needs who like to dig around and customize. Apple is simple but limited. Very simple, uh, very specific to quality. Well, Apple's like me, simple but limited. <laughs> <laughs> the match made not, maybe that's why I like it so much. <laughs> match uh, made Wolfgang heaven. says, Kenan is always a money problem. My tablet was 80 euros only. Oh, that's pretty cheap, that's true. Yeah, you can uh, you can use an expensive tablet. So that's yeah, one of the things yeah. that we talk about. You have to be careful with the wireless connection with inexpensive tablets. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking around fifty dollars or less U.S. Yeah, they get you know skimpy on the uh, Wi-Fi get, performance. That's true. Right. Uh, Carlos says I meant for us nerds. Just kidding. Mike Weezer says I'm a nerd. Been one since 1960. That's true. <laughs> You were born in 1960, <laughs> Mike, right? <laughs> uh, and Ken says Apple devices have always been overpriced. That's true. And um, anyhow, so but uh, Wolfgang uses this tablet uh, for for guiding in an M Gen two. Okay, all right. And Jeff, yeah, the M Gen two is a uh, standalone auto guiding system that they okay. use in Europe a lot. Oh, very cool. And how do we? How does that get integrated, Jerry? 
that's just a, like I said, it's a standalone camera and a computer system that's an embedded type system like the TDM is, where you just plug the ST4 cable into our mount from that system. Um, that's how it gets integrated into the mount. And was there any custom firmware you had to create? Wasn't there's some, yeah, there's a few, few customers in Europe I've been working with over the last few weeks to provide them a custom firmware for the, with the original version of the, uh, G11 and the Exos two mount controllers. It uses an analog, uh, interface for the ST4 port that needs to be calibrated that's a little different from the calibration that we provide from the factory. So I had, I, they sent me the data and then I created a firmware for them to load on their PMC eight and it works fine after that. Okay. So uh, let's move on to our next subject here. We uh, had some questions about uh, trading in and trading up your equipment. This is something that uh, not many telescope manufacturers do, but, but Explore Scientific does do. Uh, we offer the service. Uh, I can characterize uh, our trade-ins in, in as much as that what we have to do every time is we have to see, we have to see photographs of it um, uh, to get started with. And then what we'll do, uh, you know, if we're, we're kind of, close to putting together a deal is we'll ask you to send it in so we can actually check it out. And we'll run it through our QA department. Then we end up with like a final price. What I'll tell you is, is that if you, uh, for anybody trading in equipment to someone that's got to resell it, which would be us, okay, we would then turn your used uh, item around. We'd refurbish it. We'd sell it off as a silver grade a silver grade product, of course, we have to make a profit margin in that. Um, so, you know, we always let the customer know what we think it will sell for retail. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and that's something that you could sell it for yourself. And of course, make more money that way. Um, some people just don't like to go through the hassle of putting in an ad and dealing with people calling in and, and doing all the rest of it or having somebody uh, come to the house to look at it or whatever, uh, they'd much rather put that off on someone else. And so uh, for those reasons, we do offer the service. So, um, uh, but uh, to, to start that, if you want to trade in, you got an eyepiece you want to trade in or a telescope or anything that's Explore Scientific, uh, you just get in touch with customer service and they start the process. So that's how it works. And I, I always try to be very clear that that they can probably sell it for more on the open market. That, that's what, I, that's exactly, what I just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. I'm, I try to be very clear on that issue. Yeah. But yeah. we offer convenience, clear-cut process. We also have to uh, issue a warranty with it as well for mechanical and optical. That's true. That, that we have to carry that expense as well. So you yeah. won't get as much from us, but it happens fairly quickly and is a very straightforward, transparent process. Yeah. So that's that's really good if you're trading up for a new piece of equipment for sure. Like if your mount, if you want to trade an Exos two mount in for a for a G11, let's say that would that would give you uh, a little bit of extra cash there to help you along. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I've had a customer trade in a telescope for a Exos two with PMC eight. So oh. I mean, it's just uh, we you know it can trade down or split, you know, somebody can send in a more expensive something and split it between other products. Basically it just becomes a, uh, a credit to apply to the purchase of purchase of whatever you want to purchase. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I, yeah, I don't see any other com comments on that. So jumping to our next uh, topic here, uh, which is really interesting to me, is the updated ASCOM driver with server. This would be to replace the, uh, the POTH. Can you give us an update on that, Jerry? Right. That's one of the feature requests that uh, is on our list, and we've been working on that for a while. Chris Moses has been working on that for a long time, and we mentioned it last week. He actually, uh, we're getting very close. Um, I'm actually working on looking at the code, what the work that Chris has done over the last few weeks. Uh, the biggest uh, 
hurdle we have right now is creating the uh, installation setup uh, for the thing, the, the little the executable that we use to install the software on the Windows platform. We have to create that setup. And it's going to be similar, very similar to the existing setup. It's just working through that process and getting it configured correctly. But And then once, uh, once we do that, we'll probably release it for beta testing. It, it'll be for testing only. And uh, I think I, I would probably release it as, just as that for anybody who wants to try to give it a try. Right. And that, that'll be after we know that it, well, not that we know, but we have, we have tested it ourselves and are satisfied sure. that it works. We'll you know, we don't release sure stuff out for the world to try and give us all the bugs. Yeah, we don't yeah. do that. We try yeah, to squash all the bugs. In your computer or something, so. we, yeah, we squash all the bugs before <laughs> we release it for everybody else to use. And then, right. because we don't have every stinking type of, you know, laptop or configuration there is, I, I that's really did. a tough thing. Gary? Huh? I thought you had every, comp I, I see them all behind you. Your oh yeah, I've got. Computers. Well, I do have a quite a few in this uh, in this <laughs> in this control center. But the problem with the control center is they're all the same exact computers. Oh, I see. We can't afford to have computers that are all different in a control system like that. You got to deal with Dell or something. I see. We have to get the minimum applicable setup that works for everything back there. You know, so. And are you running like what Windows three point one or what are you running back there? Yeah, no, yeah, well, DOS. Some of them are DOS, DOS machines. Yeah, DOS machines and DOS. Uh, with a character graphic display. <laughs> I I went to school in the nineteen eighties on this. Uh, it's called an Iden Display Generator. This was in nineteen eighty six. It was a company in Pennsylvania that made this really cool, big twenty four inch television graphic display system, character graphic display system. And it had a touchscreen on it, believe it or not. Back then, there was touchscreens available. It was a very expensive system. Amen. This is at the nuclear station, of course. Uh, we had it in our uh, emergency control center. And I got to work on that stuff and get to school. It was it was uh, a really big system. Each each uh, What they have on a, one, a video board right now in a computer was on five different boards that were like 8 by 12 inches. Mm -hmm. and a chassis with a big honking power supply and everything else you know we got to bit chase every circuit in that in that system that was my training on that system oh boy oh so boy. yeah well so, we have a question we have a question about the software before we get too far away here uh tim myers wants to he's just verifying so this is something to replace needing the pot the path, correct yeah so the ascom server is going to be the path is a hub. There's two definitions. There's a there's a hub, and then there's a server. Okay, they do the same thing to the user. From the user point of view, it's practically identical, but the implementation is a little a little different. Early on in the ASCOM world, they developed these things called hubs uh, because they were dedicated little executable programs that everybody talked to. And and then talk and then that one program talked to the mount or the other device, whatever it was. Um, that's a hub. It's kind of like a USB hub, where you plug all the USB ports in and you have one talking to your computer. It's about the same thing. A server is a different thing. A server is like a program that runs uh, behind the scenes uh, that does the same thing. Now our server. It's probably going to have a hand control interface. Our, our uh, the ASCOM driver server is going to have an interface program, also like a client piece mm. that'll bring up, and you'll be able to do uh, hand control functions like like the Path has. But again, the server is designed to work uh, over the network. Also, that's what's different. Um, also. So what's, Gary, or, what's the advantage or, of it working over the network? Well, it's, it's not many people do this, but even now today it's possible with the uh, PMC-8 to have your local program running in Arkansas, like Maxim DL or, or Cart to Seal, let's say. Let's say you want to run Cart to Seal on your local machine, okay. but you want to connect to my mount that's on the other side of the Internet in Virginia. So, okay. 
instead of doing a remote remote access like we do with team viewer or, oh, or zoom or something stuff, you're where you're looking at scrolling it you're actually through. right you're sending commands over the internet these these are these are actually ascom uh a api commands in fact the ascom driver still runs locally on your machine so you're actually sending serial over the internet the the uh pmc8 command language over the internet to the PMC8 box directly. That's what you would be doing. So the, the box will have an IP address that's unique to itself, and so it just goes to the IP address. Right, Is exactly. It's just like right, exactly like we have now with the with the TCP IP connection over the wireless. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, what does POTH stand for? It's a plain old telescope hub. It's like the takeoff on the on the phone network. Mm -hmm. If you remember the, the phone network cable was called the plain old telephone cable or something. Handset. Service. Handset. That's right. what I it was called. Well, plain old tele telephone service is another one. POTS. That's what the old wired telephone cables were. Uh, so it's a takeoff on that where you have a plain old telescope hub mm -hmm. or telescope hand controller like you said. Uh uh, Luke La Rochelle is asking, he says, will it be compatible with the upcoming ASCOM 6.5? I tried and heard from other members that right now the 6.5 doesn't work as intended with PMC8. Yeah, I think uh, what it doesn't work with, I think, is, is uh, with specific, uh, particular configurations of Windows machines. For some reason, Windows lately has been pushing out changes that affect different things different ways for some reason. Now, I, so I've got the 6.5 beta loaded on my local machine here, and I've tested our driver with it, our existing driver with it. It works fine. I've got it in our installed in the observatory right now, using it day to day, and mm -hmm. we have yet to see a problem with it. So I don't know if it's something that I've configured on my machines that I have, you know, my laptop or the observatory computer that has, that has made it work okay. I don't know what it would be. Uh, but alternatively, there's other systems out there like, like what uh, that uh, user just said that it doesn't work right with. So I don't, I really don't know what that is. So, but it's still in beta test. Uh, could be, either a configuration with your virus protection or with your uh, with your other kind of, of uh, protection you have on your computer. Some of the settings in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the Windows networking could cause a problem. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sure if it is a, you know, a... a prevalent problem we'll hear about it soon enough so yeah it's not it's not on the main website to download yet it's just on as oh, mentioned so as a beta very much a beta type of thing. yeah it's a beta right exactly so you have to go out and find it on the github website to down i think it's on github um to download it and install it uh the platform that's available on the ascom standard.org website is is 6.4 uh, which is the release version that's been around for a couple of years at least, I think. Okay. All right. Luke, uh, he has another comment. He says, I use the same settings as I use with Poth. I guess he's still referring back to the ASCOM 6.5. So, well, uh, he says it definitely needs fine-tuning. Yeah, you should, uh, if you haven't joined as a Groups I.O., forum for the ASCOM world, uh, you might want to, if, if you're testing it, you might want to go join that and report your findings there and ask your questions there. I'm sure they would be able to, if they've seen it before, they may be able to tell you what the fix is for it on your machine. I don't, you know, I haven't done that, but you may be able to do that and find out what's mm -hmm. going on on the uh, Groups IO forum. And make, and make the product better. Have a little yeah. hand making it better. Yeah. Yeah. There's another comment here. Jeff Weiss was talking about uh, uh, connecting. Um, he uses a HTC Android phone as his hotspot. Then he connects his iPad 
to his mini PC on his scope with remote desktop, and he says it works great in the remote observatory. There's uh, there's just so many different ways <laughs> that you can <laughs> yeah. telescope, you know. So, yeah. but that sounds like a cool thing to do. Um, I've used hotspots before uh, when I was doing. Um, different kinds of work out in the field um, for astronomy and uh, it's it's can work surprisingly well so yeah uh, David Levy's on with us he says hi oh. Scotty hope we will have a date soon for my forthcoming appearance yes we will uh, my mount connects just fine but ACP doesn't work with it be well and stay safe so we have to have to look at the ACP system on David's mount and uh, if we can get at it, then uh, I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah. Yep. Hi, David. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, um, if anybody else has any other comments uh, right now, we will, uh, I think we're going to wrap up the show. We do have another show tonight with, uh, with Cesar Brolo at, uh, from Sirocco in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He's, he's going to be in live from uh, Buenos Aires, so that's, that's very cool. Um, uh, Carlos, or excuse me, Cesar has, um, uh, has been uh, involved in amateur astronomy for a long time. I know he hobnobs with the uh, researchers and professional astronomers out there, and uh, uh, he um, is a fantastic advocate for uh, amateur astronomy, pro-am work, and he's also gearing up for uh, this, uh, this year's eclipse that, that uh, observers can see from both Chile and Argentina. I think he's taken a team down through uh, up to Patagonia uh, to go see the eclipse. So, you know, if you're brave enough to uh, get on a plane and fly down there this December, you can probably see a pretty amazing eclipse. So, um, and so, anyways, what time is that? What time is that show? That is uh, at. It's going to be at six p.m. Central. So we're about an hour and a half out. So, so that would be what uh, universal time would be. Well, I know East Coast and West Coast. It'd be nine, yeah. nine or excuse me, it would be uh, seven p.m. Uh, East Coast, and then yeah, so. uh, eleven p.m. Eleven p.m. Uh, UTC. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. when do you start? When do you start putting the the UTC times in these? Because we are getting a global audience to make them easier for them to uh, right. Yeah. To understand when it's happening, not do the time conversions. Sure. Yep. So anyhow, um, but an hour and a half from now, you can see us again. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're watching right now. <laughs> All righty. So uh, you guys have a uh, thanks for participating in the show. And um, uh, we will see those of you who are watching uh, on our simulcast. Uh, we're uh, just to remind you, we're simulcasting on Twitch. We have a Twitch account for Explore Scientific. We're on Twitter uh, using Twitter Periscope, of course, YouTube, uh, which has been very active, um, and Facebook. We're on a couple of channels on Facebook as well. So uh, if I can figure out a way to get on Instagram, I would. But uh, uh, right now, the, the software I have won't, won't stream to that. So, But thanks, everyone, and keep looking up. And we will see you tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock Central, which is what universal time, Kent? I don't know. <laughs> It's it's nine. It's nine. 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 Eighteen hundred or nine? Oh, it's, nine hundred. It's, it's twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred hours UTC. Twenty one hundred U. Okay, universal time. So we'll see you then. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See you, everybody. Clear skies, everybody.